Joining me right now is David Hellier. He's a partner at Fortune Capital. I'm very happy that you could be here today. Thank you very much. Good and to be here. David, can you tell us a little about Fortune Capital? Yeah, it's a uh, we're a private equity firm. We're uh, based in Northern California. We're on our second fund, so we have $850 million of assets under management. Um, we focus on lower middle market business services, consumer and industrial businesses primarily, although I would say we, we, we really like businesses that we can grow. So uh, our founding partner was a, uh, was a venture capitalist for 23 years, Jeff Drazen, and, and Jeff started the firm with this idea that you, he could apply the same type of growth uh, methodology that he used with venture in, a, in his venture investing with the discipline of private equity. So we put together a team of investment professionals that had private equity background, kind of made them a little more entrepreneurial, and Jeff brought that that part of it, and, and they brought the discipline of private equity, and uh, we've been building out our firm for the last uh, almost seven years now. And um, in a private equity world that every private equity firm wants a differentiated business, but not a lot of private equity firms are differentiated themselves. We, we do some things that we think are fairly unique. We really focus on what we call the Bertram High Five, mm -hmm. which is our approach to bringing that kind of corporate capability to surround a solidly running business to really accelerate growth. So we do the things that a typical corporate would do, like um, add on acquisitions, um, improving um, improving the management team and board, really helping on sales and marketing. Um, probably the most unique thing we do is uh, we have a group called Bertram Labs that uh, we really believe information technology, software, and the internet are key drivers to revenue and improving gross margins. So we have a 25 person team that all we do is help our portfolio companies uh, really grow their business through technology. Wow, that's very interesting. Thanks. Yeah, it's a lot of fun too. Sure, so I'm sure, are you looking at companies in the lower middle market? Yes. And. Uh, what are the criteria that you're looking at in companies that you're going to acquire? Yeah, I mean, for us, um, everyone asks, what size EBITDA are you going after? We, we typically want to invest in the platform somewhere between 25 and $75 million of equity. We'll reserve up to $100 million in total because we like to have a balance of about half the equity invest in the platform and half for add-ons. We average about two to two, a little over two um, add-on acquisitions per platform. So. Acquisitive growth plus organic growth is the combination we look for. Um, you know, so so you know, if you look at a business, it might be EBITDA typically between seven and twenty-five or thirty million dollars of EBITDA. What's most important for us is we have a business in a in a, in a large in a large market, so there's a lot of room for growth. That we feel like there's a um, strong uh, product or brand presence, uh, as evidenced by really strong gross margins that uh, we can really help them tap into that core capability to really accelerate the growth. So when we evaluate a business, we need to feel pretty sure that we can grow it three to five times in about five years. Okay, and I'm just uh, I'm just curious, in your experience, what do you think sell, uh, sellers should be doing to make themselves attractive to a company like yours? Yeah. Well, I think you know we typically target um, businesses that are held privately, so family-owned, entrepreneur-owned, because we think there's a lot of untapped opportunity there, and there's usually some pretty interesting talent in those businesses that they just haven't had the tools necessary to maybe really accelerate their growth. Um, you know, I think there's, we, we find there's typically three things that, that businesses are challenged on. The first is just having good financial controls and good financial accounting. And the investment banks and intermediaries are usually cleaning that up at the front end. The second area that we really focus in on and we think that you know, sellers can improve on is, is sales and marketing. That they have a nominal head of sales, they don't have good sales processes, um, they haven't developed a good new product development process, they haven't really evaluated how they can build their product line. So we look at that a lot. And then the other area you know, we think is, as I mentioned, is IT, that they have you know, haven't put the right software in, they haven't deployed it properly, or they've cobbled together some software for the business, they don't have an e-commerce strategy, and, and those tend to be the areas, plus a lot of businesses overlook what, you know, what um, I would say are fundamentals with private equity. Um, customer concentration where, you know, maybe 25% of their business is with one customer, but they've been with them for years. That might be comfortable for a private owner, it's clearly not comfortable for us. Sure. And um, do you work hard to keep a large part of the management team, the talent board, and work closely with them? Yeah, we get really excited when there's a solid team that really wants to take it to the next level. So we um, we invested side by side with a, with a company that's in the apparel and footwear industry, and the management team rolled their entire 
um, equity position into the business because they felt in partnering with us that we brought the resources that would enable them to really grow the business the way that they wanted to. So we partner with them and we really act as kind of an outsource, again, corporate corporate arm for that business. And in about uh, a little over two years of ownership, we've more than doubled the business. Wow. And again, same team, some augmentation, but you know, enthusiasm plus some tools goes a long way. Sure does. Speaking in terms of areas of interest now, what do you see the deal flow like in your particular sector? Is it busier, slower? Yeah, thank goodness it's gotten a lot busier in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, uh, I go back my monthly reports back in October and November, December said expect really slow deal flow in Q1 going into Q2, and we saw really slow deal flow in Q1 and Q2. And um, a lot of the uh, investment banks were trying to get deals done, and the pipeline just wasn't built. And consequently, it was a it's been a pretty slow first kind of four months of the year. We've definitely seen an uptick going into May. We've heard really good response, a lot of pitch activity, both with privately held businesses and sponsor held businesses. So we expect to see a, a pretty significant uptick, uh, certainly after, well, it's significant given how um, how uh, weak it's been relative to the last couple of years. It sure has. Are there particular areas of opportunity? Yeah, you know, we've seen it fairly consistent across the board. I wouldn't say that any one sector, I mean, energy and energy services have been strong, but um, I think that's more opportunistic, but it's been pretty balanced across the industries. We've seen, a, you know, we've seen numerous consumer deals uh, that we're getting interested in, so we, we've definitely seen some rebound there, okay. and that's encouraging. Yes, okay. Are there any challenges that you think uh, investors are facing in the next 12 months that they need to be thinking about now in terms of identifying good targets and closing deals successfully? I mean, I think the, probably the biggest challenge is quality of, of opportunities. We, we saw, along with quantity down, we've seen a, a, a challenge. Um, I think scarcity is going to play uh, into uh, deal flow this year in that um, I think if, you, if a seller has a really high quality business, they're definitely going to stand out. Um, certainly over the next, for the next few months, they have an opportunity to really stand out. Um, I think, you know, the debt markets still remain very positive, so that's good. Um, you know, you know, candidly, I think it's because there's been a, a, you know, a slowdown in deal flow. I think that those companies that get out ahead of the process um, will stand out as deal flow picks up. I think it's going to become harder to stand out. I think that becomes a little more of a challenge. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your observations. Yeah, thanks very Pleasure much. Enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you.